Rich Ferrari with TMC. Thanks for watching. We are at WebRTC Expo 2013. We're in Atlanta, Georgia. On our program right now is Ben Strong, is the CEO of V-Line. And uh, Ben, welcome to the show. How are you? Good, thanks. Good to be here. Uh, we're thrilled to have you. So tell us about V-Line. So V-Line is a WebRTC infrastructure provider. Uh, our main focus is to make it as absolutely easy as possible for developers to add video calling, video chat, and instant messaging to their applications. Okay, so um, basically you provide a bunch of APIs for developers? Right, so we provide uh, some APIs on the client side that include the low-level plumbing you need if you want to build basically your own custom user interface, and we also provide some high-level user interface components if you just want to drop in uh, completely working high-level uh, basically chat components into your application. And then we also on the back end run a global network of servers um, that do the signaling and messaging and stun and turn and conferencing. <clears throat> Excuse me. So uh, are these services, uh, I guess they're cloud based? So that yes. So that you could just call them via APIs and then you just add them into your applications. Now what about usage, pricing, um, revenue generation? How does that work? So we're still free during beta right now. Our pricing plan is not 100% final. Um, but we're going to be uh, basically per minute based, um, based on your multi-party conferencing minutes. And also there will be uh, tiered based pricing based on how many concurrent users you have. And there will be a free tier that will be sufficient to do um, a pretty moderate scale application. Now do you anticipate a lot of applications will be uh, embedding collaboration because of WebRTC? I think that any application where people communicate which is probably 95% of applications, it makes sense to be able to escalate into a real-time conversation. And if you're going to do that, then you want you know, the highest quality conversation possible. And I think the right way to do that is WebRTC. So yes. That's fascinating. I'm just thinking about that. The comment you made about 95% of applications being communications oriented. And you know, as I think about all the applications, I do use a lot of communications apps. I spend a lot of time in email. I think most, many people spend a lot of time in email and that's one that obviously you can, you can benefit from escalating into a live video conference or audio conference. Right, which is why Gmail has the video chat on the, on the left hand side of your, uh, of your inbox. And yeah, I think that scales to any other application out there. So now what about differentiation? How do you, uh, if you've got potential customers or potential users watching this right now, why would they use your service versus any of the other ones that might be out there? So we've been doing this basically since the WebRTC code first dropped on the web back in the summer of 2011. Uh, we took that code, we brought up a plugin before it was even available in Chrome, and we started building out the back end. And we've had two years of working with making sure that the calls connect all the time. So I think you will find that we connect calls more than anyone else out there, and that right there makes the difference between a service being usable and not. Uh, the other differentiator is that we give you these high-level, fully-baked user interface components. A lot of the other solutions out there will give you the low-level plumbing, but it's up to you to build the interface. You need to build uh, uh, notifications yourself. You need to build the call controls so that you can, if you want to do full screen or mute or in the call, well, you're responsible for building all that UI. With us, you can just drop in three or four lines of JavaScript and we'll take care of all that. Fantastic. So um, how much of a time savings is it using your service versus uh, learning all the specifics of WebRTC yourself? That's really hard to quantify because the pattern that we see developers going through is that it's really easy to get started with WebRTC. You can take one of the examples that's out there on the web like AppRTC, you can bring it up on your own server and you can be going in half an hour but then you quickly realize that it's not a complete solution. And developers basically incrementally discover along the way that they, they need more than what they started with. Um, on the back end side, you say, oh, I actually need a stun server. And then you realize, no, I need a turn server. And then you realize, oh, I also need turn TCP. And that's a whole series of incremental uh, time sucks as you figure out how to do these things. And on the user interface side, you start with, oh, there's just, I can see the video of the other side. That's all I need. And then you realize, oh, I really need mute. Um, and then I want to be able to see if the other side is muted. So what happens is that you go a lot further with ours than you ever would have with yours because you would never have had the time to invest to get all the little details right. Um, so I think that it's really, uh, you know, potentially, I mean, we've spent man years working on just the user interface components. Um, 
So it's really a huge time savings to get to the you know, fully uh, baked uh, user interface that you want to put in front of a customer. So I'm glad we're talking because um, I've been hearing some chatter on the web where some people have said um, WebRTC is so simple, you can just get started, you don't need any help, you just start programming. And um, I, I liken that kind of approach to building a car is so simple, you can just build your own car, you don't really need to go out and buy a car, you can build your own car. And I think that what you've done is you've answered a lot of the questions as to what a developer will face along the way of um, coming up with a complete solution for their needs. Right, and it's really no different from any other kind of web development. It's really easy to write a little HTML and then bring up a website, you know, upload it to any server. Um, and then you realize that, well, you know, I want that site to be dynamic. I need to go write some code on the front end, on the back end. I need a database server, and I want to make it fast, so I should have a CDN. Um, and this exact same analogy with WebRTC, yes, it's easy to get going, but you know, just like any type of development, it's going to take some real work to get a rich, fully baked solution. Well, thank you for articulating um, some of the answers to the questions that have been posed on the internet much better than I could have. So, appreciate your time. I'm looking forward to seeing you at the event, and thanks for being here. Thank you.